The next generation of artificial intelligence is called GPT-3. Due to its amazing capacity for website creation, pharmaceutical prescription, and question answering, the artificial intelligence program, GPT-3, has been creating a stir online. The third iteration of the machine learning model is known as GPT-3, or Generative Pre-Training Transformer. When computers automatically learn from their experiences without being instructed, this is referred to as machine learning. Because of its capacity to produce language that appears to be indistinguishable from that written by humans, GPT-2's predecessor gained notoriety for being declared too hazardous to distribute. Hi and welcome to this channel. Please kindly like this video and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this and be sure to watch to the end. Developer and artist Aram Sabeti, who is located in San Francisco, tweeted last week, playing with GPT-3 is like seeing the future. That pretty much covers up how people have been responding to OpenAI's most recent language generating AI on social media during the past few days. GPT-3 was first introduced by OpenAI in a study that was released in May. However, it started releasing the software to a small group of users last week who had asked to access a private beta. For the time being, OpenAI wants independent developers to assist it in exploring what GPT-3 is capable of. However, later this year, it hopes to make the tool into a commercial product and provide organizations with a paid membership to the AI through the cloud. GPT-3, as its name implies, is the third in a line of autocomplete tools created by OpenAI. Although the algorithm took years to design, it is currently benefiting from recent advancements in the field of AI text production. These developments resemble the leap ahead in AI image processing that occurred from 2012 onwards in many aspects. GPT-3 scans the data for patterns, just like any deep learning algorithms. The software has been trained on a sizable corpus of text that is mined for statistical regularities to make things simpler. Humans are unaware of these patterns, but they are preserved in GPT-3's neural network as billions of weighted connections between the various nodes. The program searches and identifies patterns on its own, without any help, and then uses these patterns to answer text prompts. This is an important aspect of the process. According to the weights in its network, GPT-3 understands that the terms truck and alarm are considerably more likely to follow the word fire than lucid or elvish. So far, so easy. GPT-3 stands out due to the enormous scale on which it operates and the staggering variety of autocomplete tasks this enables it to do. The weights of the connections between the network's nodes, which serve as a decent proxy for the complexity of the model, were among the 117 million parameters that made up the first GPT, which was published in 2018. The 2019 edition of GPT-2 had 1.5 billion parameters. GPT-3, however, contains 175 billion parameters, which is more than 100 times as many as its predecessor and 10 times as many as similar programs. The enormous data set that GPT-3 was trained on is comparable. It is difficult to determine the exact amount, but we do know that English Wikipedia, with around 6 million pages, accounts for only 0.6% of its training data. However, even that number is not entirely correct because GPT-3 trains by reading certain portions of the database more frequently than others. The remaining information comes from online links and digital books. So in addition to things like news stories, recipes, and poetry, the training data for GPT-3 also contains code manuals, fan fiction, religious prophecy, guides to Bolivia's songbirds, and anything else you can think of. Any text that has been published online has probably been processed by GPT-3's powerful pattern matching engine. However, the depth and complexity of the output are equivalent to the unheated depth and complexity. You may have seen instances recently circulating on social media and Twitter, but an autocomplete AI turns out to be a delightfully adaptable tool, simply because so much data can be saved as text. OpenAI has supported these efforts over the past few weeks by providing the AI community with access to the GPT-3's commercial API, a simple text-in, text-out interface that the company is selling to customers as a private beta.
New use cases have flooded in as a result of this. A sampling of what individuals have made using GPT-3. We have a search engine that works by asking questions. It's similar to Google, but only for questions and responses. When you enter a question, GPT-3 sends you to the appropriate Wikipedia URL to find the solution a chatbot that connects you to historical figures. GPT-3 has learned quite a bit about certain thinkers because it was trained on so much digitized literature. As a result, you could train GPT-3 to speak like, say, the philosopher Bertrand Russell and ask him to clarify his viewpoints. But since fictional personalities are just as available to GPT-3 as historical ones, my favorite example of this is a conversation between Alan Turing and Claude Shannon which is interrupted by Harry Potter. Using only a few instances, solve language and syntax puzzles. This is significantly more impressive to professionals in the field, but less amusing than some examples. The GPT-3 will successfully finish any new prompts you offer it if you demonstrate particular linguistic patterns, such as food producer becomes producer of food and olive oil becomes oil made of olives. This is exciting since it shows that GPT-3 has absorbed some complex linguistic principles without any formal training. Such capabilities are new and incredibly exciting for AI. According to computer science professor Yov Goldberg, who has been posting many of these examples on Twitter, but they don't imply that GPT-3 has mastered English. Generating code from text descriptions. Simply describe a design element or page layout of your choice, and GPT-3 will generate the appropriate code. Such demos have already been produced by tinkerers for a variety of computer languages. Resolve medical questions. A UK medical student responded to queries about healthcare using GPT-3. The software not only provided the appropriate response but also accurately described the underlying biological mechanism. A text-based dungeon crawler. You may have heard of the text-based adventure game AI Dungeon before but you might not be aware that the GPT series powers it. GPT-3 has been added to the game to produce more insightful text adventures. Transfer of style for text. GPT-3 can transform text entered in one style into another. In a Twitter example, a user asked GPT-3 to convert material from plain English to legal language. The phrase, my landlord didn't maintain the property is changed to the defendants have permitted the real property to fall into disrepair and have failed to comply with state and local health and safety standards and regulations by doing this. Write guitar chord tabs. Since ASC2 text files are used to exchange guitar tabs online, you can bet that they are included in the GPT-3 training dataset. Naturally, this means that after being given a few chords, to begin with, GPT-3 can produce music on its own. Create fiction. This is a broad field of expertise for GPT-3, but it is a very impressive one. Gorn Branwen, an independent researcher and writer, has compiled a wealth of GPT-3 writers' writing in this collection, which is the best collection of the program's literary examples. It includes anything from a Tom Swifty, a one-sentence joke, to poetry written in the vein of T.S. Eliot, Emily Dickinson, and Allen Ginsberg to Navy SEAL copypasta. Not only text, but image autocomplete. Although the OpenAI team did this work with GPT-2 rather than GPT-3, it still serves as an impressive illustration of the model's adaptability. It demonstrates how the fundamental GPT architecture may be modified to be trained on images rather than words, enabling it to carry out the same autocomplete functions with visual input as it does with text input. They are remarkable because none of these specific activities have been taught to GPT-3. Typically, language models, like GPT-2, go through a foundational training phase before being fine-tuned to carry out specific tasks. GPT-3, however, doesn't require adjusting. In syntax problems, it is necessary to learn from a small number of samples of the desired output, a process called few-shot learning. But in general, the model is so large and expansive that all of these many functions can be found nested within its nodes. To get them to speak up, the user merely needs to enter the right prompt. I mean, if this continues, this will make a lot of activities ridiculously easier. A normal activity that you should spend hours on is being reduced to minutes. 
and also you can perform several activities from writing to composing music to coding to answering medical questions and we have just begun to see what this can do and there is still a lot to come. I believe that more use for GPT-3 will arise and it is being used. That being said, we have come to the end of this video. We hope you find it interesting and educating. Kindly like this video, subscribe to the channel, and we would love to hear from you. Kindly drop your comments in the comments section below. You can also stay back, relax, and watch one or more videos. See you in the next video.